Hello again. Today I will talk to you about inductive arguments. We finished our section on deductive arguments. At least, we finished our introductory section. Today, we will finish our section on inductive arguments. At least, the introductory section. In part two of our semester, we will focus on deductive arguments again, and we will give a method for showing whether an argument is, a deductive argument is valid or invalid. In the third section of our course, we will focus on inductive arguments again, and we will look at moral arguments and analogical arguments. What is an inductive argument? This is an argument in which it is claimed that if the premises are true, the conclusion is probable or probably true. In other words, true premises make it improbable for the conclusion to be false. Now, what does it mean for the premises to make the conclusion probable? We'll define it in our class as follows. That the likelihood of the conclusion being true is greater than 50-50. So take a coin flip. If you have a fair coin, the likelihood that the coin will land on heads is 50-50, and the likelihood that the coin will land on tails is 50-50. Okay, so that's what it is for something to have a likelihood of 50-50. Now here we have an example of an inductive argument. Premise 1 says 40% of the marbles in the bag are black. Premise 2 says John is going to randomly draw a marble from the bag. Randomly. Con the conclusion says John is going to draw a black marble. Now, this is not a good inductive argument because the likelihood that the conclusion is true, given true premises, is less than 50-50. In fact, the likelihood is 40-60. Now, inductive arguments can be strong or weak. A strong inductive argument is, such, is an argument that is not deductively valid and is such that the truth of its premises make it probable that the conclusion is true. Let's look at that first part of the definition, an argument that is not deductively valid. With a deductively valid argument, the truth of the premises make the conclusion certain. So the probability that the conclusion is true, given true premises, is 100%. So we need to say that strong inductive arguments are not deductively valid because we want to be able to distinguish deductively valid arguments from strong inductive arguments. So we'll say that with an inductive argument, a strong inductive argument, its probability can't be 100%. So with a strong inductive argument, it cannot be the case that if the premises are true, the probability that the conclusion is true is 100%. It has to be something lower than 100% if we're going to distinguish strong inductive arguments from deductively valid arguments. Now let's look at the second part of that definition. The argument is also such that the truth of the premises make it probable that the conclusion is true. So the truth of the premises make the probability that the conclusion is true greater than 50-50. With a weak inductive argument, you have um, an argument such that if the premises are true, the conclusion is not probably true. So, to be probably true is to have a probability of greater than 50-50. To be not probably true is to have a probability of 50-50 or less. So, you might notice that strength is to induction as validity is to deduction and weakness is to induction as sound, uh, unsound, excuse me, invalidity is to 
deduction. So weakness is to induction as invalidity is to deduction. Here are some examples of both a strong argument and a weak argument. So, suppose that you have an opaque jar containing exactly 100 marbles and a person wants to choose a marble at random. With the strong argument, you have two premises. There are 51 blue marbles in the jar. There are 49 red marbles in the jar. And the conclusion is that the marble picked is blue. Now we can see that this is strong because the truth of the premises make the conclusion probably true. That is, the truth of the premises make it such that the probability that the conclusion is true is greater than 50-50. It's a strong argument. Now let's look at the second argument. It has the same premises. There are 51 blue marbles in the jar. There are 49 red marbles in the jar. But the conclusion is different. The conclusion is that the marble picked is red. This is weak because the probability that the conclusion is true is less than 50-50, given the truth of the premises. Now you might think, isn't 50-50 sort of an arbitrary cutoff? So that anything that has a 51% likelihood of being true is a strong argument, and anything that gives a conclusion a 50-50, 50% 50 um, 50 -50, 50 likelihood of being true is a weak argument? Yes, the cutoff is kind of arbitrary, but note that strength comes in degrees and weakness comes in degrees. So although you might have a strong argument that's close to 50-50, you also might have a strong argument that's closer to 100% probability. So a 90 out of 100% probability that the conclusion is true. Now that's a strong argument. And while weakness might be close to 50-50. You might have a weak argument where the probability that the conclusion is true is 50-50 given the truth of the premises, but weakness comes in degrees. So you might have a weak argument that's really weak, like the probability that the conclusion is true given the truth of the premises is 10%. A 10% probability is not very good. So there is a big difference between or there can be a big difference between a strong argument and a weak argument, even if there's sort of a middle ground where they're not so different. Let's do an example. See if you can get whether this is weak or strong. Premise 1. This cooler contains 30 cans of beer, 15 of which are Pabst Blue Ribbon. Conclusion. A can chosen at random from the cooler will be Pabst Blue Ribbon. Is this strong or weak? Weak. The reason is that the probability of choosing PBR from the cooler at random is 50-50. And we defined weakness as uh, true premises make the conclusion 50-50, probable or lower. There's a 50% probability that the conclusion is true or lower given the truth of the premises. That's a weak argument. And we identified strength as there's a probability of 51% of a, or above that the conclusion is true given true premises. So this argument is right at the cutoff point. How about this argument? Most politicians are liars but it's not the case that most liars are politicians. Madison is a liar, thus Madison is a politician. Is this strong or weak? Again, we have a weak argument. Since it's not the case that most liars are politicians, we cannot conclude that it's likely that Madison is a politician simply from the fact that she's a liar. Now, if it had said, most politicians are liars, Madison is a politician, thus Madison is a liar, it would have been a strong argument, given the word most. But with the particular argument we have, given the phrase not most, 
in the claim not most liars are politicians, we have a weak argument. In addition to being either strong or weak, inductive arguments can be cogent or uncogent. A cogent inductive argument is as follows. The argument is strong, and the premises are true. An uncogent inductive argument is as follows. The argument is weak or has at least one false premise. A cogent argument for induction is like a sound argument for deduction. And an uncogent argument is for induction like an unsound argument is for deduction. So cogency is to induction as soundness is to deduction. And uncogency is to induction as unsoundness is to deduction. Notice that a cogent inductive argument must satisfy two features. It must be strong, meaning if the premises are true, the conclusion is probably true. And, in fact, the premises need to be true. With an uncogent argument, it just needs to fail in one respect. It either needs to be weak or have at least one false premise. To be weak means that if the premises are true, the conclusion is not probably true. Okay, let's see if you can get this um, argument. Is it inductive or deductive? And if it's inductive, is it strong or weak? And if it's inductive, is it cogent or uncogent? If it's deductive, is it valid or invalid? If it's deductive, is it sound or unsound? Here's the argument. Every species of bird can fly, with the exception of 60 species. Which, 60 species is not very much compared to how many species there are in fact. George is a bird. Therefore, George can fly. Is this inductive or deductive, strong or weak, valid or invalid, sound or unsound, cogent or uncogent? This is inductive. Just because George is a bird, it doesn't guarantee that George can fly. Because we don't have enough information to know that George is a, of a species that can fly. So it's inductive. The truth of the premises don't guarantee the truth of the conclusion. George might be among the 60, a member of, of the one of the 60 species who cannot fly. Also, I mean, George might also be injured, be a bird who is of a species who can fly, but George is injured. So it's inductive. Then is it strong or weak? It's strong because most species of bird can fly. It's strong because most species of bird can fly. And finally, we can't say whether it's cogent or uncogent because we don't know who George is. Is George a bird? We don't know. So we can't say whether or not the premise that George is a bird is true. For all we know, George is Donald Trump. And if George is Donald Trump, well, we know George can't fly. Here's a summary chart on the difference between deduction and induction. An argument is deductively valid, just in case it is not possible for the premises to be true and the conclusion to be false. An argument is inductively strong, just in case it is not deductively valid and the truth of the premises make the conclusion, makes the conclusion probable. An argument is sound just in case it is both valid and the premises are true. An argument is cogent just in case it is strong, inductively strong and the premises are true. That concludes our section on induction. Let me know if you have any questions and I'll hear from you soon.